What movie had an absurdly simple solution to the problem that the characters blatantly ignore? Free Willy. If someone is trying to scam an insurance company by killing the whale, just dial the insurance company and snitch on them. Not having seen this movie in 20 plus years, I think I now need to rewatch it to pick up on that plot point. Iron Man 2. The whole problem is that the power source in his chest is poisoning him, but he can't remove the power chest without the shrapnel killing him. But in the first Iron Man, he dealt with the shrapnel by using the car battery to power the magnets. If he removes the power source he can detoxify almost immediately, and it apparently takes a few years for it to accumulate to dangerous levels. So the solution to Iron Man 2's dilemma was in the first 5 minutes of Iron Man. He could have also just gotten the shrapnel surgically removed, like in Iron Man 3. You briefly overpowered your enemy and they dropped their weapon? Better keep running in the opposite direction and not pick up the weapon. No, you see, that is a weapon of evil, and if I use it, I will be as evil, if not worse, than them. The issue in Tangle could have been delayed at least if Mother Gothel had just changed Rapunzel's birthday to the day before or after the lights being released, that way she wouldn't be suspicious that they were for her. Or not taught her about the concept of a birthday, Rapunzel seems way too well adjusted literate normal for a girl holed up in her home by her crazy butt mom. Dear Eric, I'm the girl who saved your life. I'm actually a mermaid. I thought you were so hot that I traded my voice for a vagina. It's all going to be sushi down there again in 3 days unless we make out. Sincerely, Ariel. We need more Bond villains who just shoot Bond as soon as they meet them. No monologues. No ridiculously complicated methods of slow death. Just a bullet to the head. Haha <laughs> this reminds me of Scott Evil in Austin Powers. Main character desires a girl in a healthy relationship with another man. The guy's stable and supportive. She's not being abused at all. They're both gainfully employed. And are set for a great future. Dear protagonist. Leave them alone. But but but. The guy who seems to be nice and is running a fine business is actually an butthole that wants to use her to make himself look good. He doesn't even love Christmas. In the new Yogi Bear they are going to shut down the park because not enough guests are coming and some evil guy is going to buy all the land. The entire film they are trying to come up with ways they could attract people to the park. It ends up being a rare lizard or some crap like that. The whole movie I was asking myself what about the freaking talking bear. Wouldn't that attract people to your park? A mother freaking magical talking bear but no. A lizard. Many horror movies seem to ignore the solution where you just kill whatever psycho is after you. I'm thinking of some movie, can't remember the name, specifically where this guy had killed several women, and was chasing the main character around, trying to kill her. She gets in a lucky shot and knocks him out with a pool cue, and then she runs off, and he wakes up and resumes trying to kill her. He was helpless at your feet, just beat him to death with the freaking pool cue. Honestly, it stretches beyond horror movies too. So many problems in movies and TV could be solved by just killing the people causing them. Most movies with giant objects, that is, boulders, chasing people, they always run straight instead of running off to the side. They all went to Prometheus school of running away from things. Eurotrip. Scotty could have just made another email account and explained the misunderstanding to make. I guess there are a lot of things that Scotty doesn't know. Actually the problem was his lack of effort and overall passion. Which is in part what caused his girlfriend Fiona to find someone better. He wanted to use this moment as the stepping stone to be far less dull, be spontaneous. So this trip was as much about him growing as it was about getting Eurotail. So many episodes of Star Trek Voyager could have been solved if Janeway hadn't randomly decided that the Prime Directive applies this week so many times they had a piece of technology within their grasp. But nope. They can't because apparently trading technology with species with warp travel is against the Prime Directive. There were many episodes where Janeway violates the Prime Directive on a whim, such when she received a message from a dead colony world that specifically said we are in artificial hibernation until this planet is less crap. So please go away. Janeway went down and dicked with them anyway. I mean the people were thankful, as the people were being tortured by a holographic clown. Long story. 
However, Janeway has refused to break the Prime Directive to stop genocide, but decided to break it for a small group of people she had no way of knowing they were in any peril. Also, in the, ungodly awful, episode Threshold, Tom Paris managed to invent an engine that moved at infinite speed. It worked, but had the minor defect of turning people into salamanders make humans reach their final evolutionary state, ignoring the fact that none of that makes any sense. The doctor managed to find a cure and reversed the salamander's rapid evolution they literally could have jumped straight back to earth, apply the cure, and end the series right there, but they don't because frick you. The Die Hard sequel, where they take over the airport, they cut off all communications with air traffic control by blowing up one antenna. I was an active pilot at that time, working on my commercial rating, and always had a radio in my flit bag. That was normal. Tons of us had handheld aviation radios and any one of them would have been just fine to talk to everyone. And there are scores of airplanes parked on the tarmac, each with a bank of radios that can talk to anyone. And the next airport over had radios that can talk to anyone, and center, and approach. Needless to say, I had a little trouble suspending disbelief when watching that one. What got me the most was the multiple other airports in the area around that the airplanes could have landed at. They could have just shot the pod carrying C-3PO and R2 just to be safe. I mean, why not? What does a laser shot cost? Not a movie, but I definitely feel like Dora the Explorer could simply just walk around most of the f-king obstacles she encounters. I've been thinking about this for years. I blamed Map. He's always trying to get Dora killed. Dora, you have to wade through Crocodile River, tiptoe through Carnivore Valley, walk along the ridge of death and then you'll get to Gumdrop Mountain. Waterworld. Drinkable water is extremely rare expensive, as everything is salt water. But in the opening moments of the movie, we see Kevin Costner peeing into a contraption that cleans his urine and lets him drink it and water his tomato plant. Why wouldn't he just pour seawater into it? Jurassic Park. Hammond repeatedly boasts about how he spared no expense in the park's construction, yet he puts its life-critical IT infrastructure in the hands of one person that he knows is disgruntled and considers himself underpaid. And that's without getting into the stupidity of making the park's security dependent on an electrical system in the first place. T-Rex is about as heavy as an elephant. Do real zoos have elephants break out of the enclosure every time the power goes out? Number. Because they weren't designed by idiots. I've heard in the book that it is more clear that Hammond spared every expense, but kept using that phrase. A new hope. In the first five minutes the stormtroopers knock Laird out cold with a stun setting on their blasters that covers half the width of a hallway. This would be useful a dozen times throughout the movie but they never attempt it again. Star Trek has this exact same problem with their phasers. They can sweep a whole room at once. There's no excuse to miss, ever. Pulp Fiction. Of all the freaking things she could forget, she forgets his father's watch. He specifically reminded her, bedside table, on the kangaroo. He said the words, don't forget my father's watch. Well, if he was that bothered about it, he should have kept it up his butt, like his dad did. In Dodgeball, the hotel they're staying at that the tournament has organized causes the death of their coach patches through neglect, easy lawsuit and millions of dollars let alone the $50k they originally need. In Liar Liar, Jim Carrey could have substituted every lie with I want to say. Example I want to say this pen is red and it's not a lie. He was unable to imply a lie or form any type of misdirection. Limitless. How about you just pay the Russian gangster who is after 100k? At this point Eddie Mora was making huge deals on the stock market so I bet he could have afforded it. That way the Russian never takes your NZT in the first place. Or, maybe not keep the Russian supplied with the same drug that keeps you the smartest person in the world? Psychopathic behavior and superhuman intelligence never mix well. Yeah, if you're really that smart, you know how to cut drugs and get the guy off it or poison him when you give him the drugs or any number of other things that equals solved problem. I mean the possibilities are, wait for it, limitless. Any rom-com with a stupid misunderstanding ploy, so 90% of rom-com should go. What were you doing with that W? I was just having dinner with my mother, instead of 
Frick you for not trusting me. I'm getting on a plane today. Crappy example but you'll get the point. Star Wars Phantom Menace. In the beginning when Keegan and Obi-Wan get gassed, the leader dude says they should be dead. Destroy whatever is left of them and they open the doors. But why? Just leave them there for a few minutes. I mean even watching along you can hold your breath longer than they left the doors shut. If they had just been patient, Keegan and Obi would have been dead, and that would be the end of that. It follows. Have sex with. Explain the situation to a rich guy. Tell him to fly to Thailand and bang every sex worker there then fly back. Most of those sex workers are going to be having sex with tourists who have flown in themselves. You'll die of old age while it walks along the ocean bed forever. Maybe do it to a few rich guys just as a buffer. I thought a perfect ending for that film would have been the protagonist getting on a plane to create a big chunk of separation. And just as she sits down, she sees it coming down the aisle. The big Glibowski dude. He could have just stay home and accept he has a pee on rug man. Instead everything turned into a freaking travesty. I love that movie. The Big Lebowski. Act 1. Rug Peon. Act 2. The Dude Buys Oxyclean. The End. Back to the Future 3. There are two time machines in the Old West. Use the one Doc Brown walled up in the mine for parts gasoline to repair Marty's one. I just watched Anastasia for the first time during the Snowpocalypse and didn't understand why Dimitri, or the main character guy, didn't just tell the old lady that he was the guy who saved her and Anastasia during the attack. He could've like, described the room or how he saved them or something. After Earth. In one scene, a child hides from a monster that is blind but can smell fear by hiding under a small plastic dome. It works because a monster can't smell him under the dome. He grows up to fight these nearly unbeatable creatures and everyone ignores the fact that every house just needs like a closet airlock for people to hide in. Les Miserables. Jean Valjean should have quietly petitioned for a pardon while he was mayor of Montreuil sur mer. He had the political capital for it, and the king himself tried to give him several high honors he refused. He should have quietly tried to work out a deal politically, mentioning it would look terrible on the very shaky monarchy if the guy they gave several high honors to was a convicted criminal on the run. If he didn't do that, he should have told the court there was no way Champ Mathieu could have been Jean Valjean because he had no scars. In the musical this is made even dumber by the fact he has a huge historically, and novel, inaccurate number branded on his chest. The moment they get Champ Mathieu undressed into prison garb, they're going to notice that he has no giant numbers, he could have demanded the court check for brands or scars before conviction. He never needed to declare that he was actually Valjean. Even in the novel, he escaped multiple times, so the punishment would have been 40 lashes each time, plus added years so even in the novel he had tons of scars and a freaking limp this other guy didn't have. That's physical evidence he should have demanded the judge see. TL. DR. Jean Valjean is an idiot. A lucky lovable idiot. I have lots of feelings about historical accuracy. Not a movie, but in The Walking Dead, they covered themselves in zombie guts twice so they couldn't be smelt by the zombies. Why wouldn't they do that all the time? Figure it out Rick. Because they are scared of the multitude of diseases that would be found in the zombie guts, and in a world like The Walking Dead, you could expect to have a cut on your body almost all the time, so that means the disease has an entryway, killing you that way. Inside Out. Joy and Sadness are carrying around core memories they absolutely must get back to headquarters. They stumble upon a couple of maintenance workers who demonstrate a nifty portal that sends memories straight up to headquarters. They use the portal for earworms but there does not seem to be any reason in the world why Joy and Sadness couldn't just put the core memories in the portal and send them straight to headquarters. Silence of the Lambs. If there had been a CCTV in the room where Hannibal Lecter was being kept in the cage, then there is no way he could have slaughtered and mutilated the guards and then put the skin of one of the guards face over his own, all without anyone seeing or knowing what had happened. Man, this is a great comment to read if you don't know what Silence of the Lambs is. Flowers in the Attic. Boarding school and summer camp in a different state. Much safer than keeping the kids in the ancestral home full of servants and guests. This might be a little controversial but Star Wars. 
The entire fall of the Jedi Order could have been prevented if the Jedi Council had stuck to their original decision not to train Anakin. Instead they decided to train him for reasons. Just rewatched Ep 1. Obi-Wan swore to Qui-Gon, just before his death, that he would train the kid. Yoda said no and Obi-Wan said he was going to train the kid anyway. Yoda relented as he felt it was better to have him trained in the Order than outside it. Titanic. Rose. Mr. Andrews. Forgive me. I did the sum in my head and with the number of lifeboats times the capacity you mentioned. Forgive me. But it seems that there are not enough for everyone aboard. Thomas Andrews. About half. Actually. Rose. You miss nothing. Do you? I forget the name. But it's that movie where. For one day. All crime is legal in the US. So the main characters seal themselves into their home with all kinds of security. Why the heck wouldn't you seal up your home and use that weekend to take a trip to Canada or Aruba or something? Why even be in the country during this? I'm writing the letter to file a complaint against the two officers who came to my house to collect my son and care for him until we can get back into town but instead knocked on the door and instead of understanding that a kid may be scared of people knocking on the door at night when he's home alone they decide oh this must be a prank call from a grown woman and decided to leave. As you are already aware two burglars invaded our home and were about to eat and murder my son if not for our kind neighbor rescuing him. Sincerely Mrs. McAllister. Just watch that horror film it follows and honestly couldn't stop screaming at the dumbasses. Okay. First thing. You know this thing can't go through walls because it uses doors and windows. So get some friends to dig a concrete line pit. Or build a steel cage. And lure the freaking thing inside it. It only takes human form so as long as a baby couldn't escape through any cracks or holes you'll be fine. Second thing. You know it can be hit by crap like a chair or a blanket. So go buy a freaking sword or an axe or a chainsaw and frick that thing up. Third, why the frick would you shoot at it when people are within a 15 degree cone of it in front of you? And to those people, why the frick aren't you running away from the area where the gun is pointing? What the frick? Fourth, obviously these kids have money, or access to money. Get a goddamn plane ticket and fly across the country. Then if you see that thing again in a few months or years, fly back. Frick that thing. Make it walk its butt across a continent if it wants a piece of you. Taunt it. Get like 5 feet away and just rip into it about how it's slow as frick and weak and can't catch you for crap and it'll never get the satisfaction of killing you because it's a crappy curse that can't even run. Fifth, why the frick did they never go into a church? Like even just to see if that would help? I'll tell you something. If some Mithafrican curse monster demon crap was stalking me to murder me you bet your butt the first place I'd go would be a catholic church and I'd tell the priest right away and ask for an exorcist or whatever. Throw a blanket on the thing's head to prove it's there. Whatever I need to do to get some dude to call on Jesus and his daddy to smite this demon curse crap. Finally, if I wake up to a rhythmic knocking on my door and I hear some girl I just slept with because she's afraid of a curse monster killing her screaming don't open the door you can bet that the very freaking last thing I would ever do ever would be to open the freaking door like some kind of idiot. And if I did want to see just to make sure I sure as heck wouldn't swing the door wide open and stand there like a fuckwit, I'd crack it open and peep out with all my weight against the door just in case I needed to force it shut again. I don't know. I just want more smart horror movies where the characters live in a universe where horror films exist and they don't make dumbass decisions. Like it would be terrifying to me if they did all the right things and made all the best choices and still got fricked with by whatever antagonist is in the film. Like Cabin in the Woods. That was a great movie because at least the stoner could see how some of the ideas were really freaking dumb but the dudes in the control room happened to have a way to make everyone do dumb crap anyways. That was perfect. In Much Ado About Nothing the maid who had sex with Don John's friend could have explained everything at the wedding scene. Well yes, she could have. But that part of the whole point of the story. The people who are in the higher class don't tend to listen to those in the lower class. Just like how the captain of the guard was blown off when he tried to tell them he had important evidence. No one's mentioned Donnie Docco, so I'll just go for it. Donnie is called out of bed by Frank. Frank saves Donnie's life as a jet engine meant for him crashes through his bed. Frank tells Donnie that timelines have now diverged, the world isn't stable, he has a week to fix it. 
The solution to fixing the timeline is to send the jet engine back in time to kill Donnie. If Frank hadn't called Donnie out of bed in the first place to fix a problem he had just created, everything would be fine. Frank is in butthole. Frank gave him his wish of not dying alone. Labyrinth. If Sarah carried on listening to the caterpillar, she would have realized going left takes her straight to the castle. R.I.P. Bowie. I mean, that's literally the joke. They play the trope of, if only you'd heard the second half for a laugh early on in the movie. If she'd only listened, she would have gone right there. What irony. In Saw, the two guys in the opening act 2 are chained up in a bathroom or whatever should have known that the guy on the floor was alive. When they got the recorder out of his left hand, it was empty. No cassette. When they got the revolver out of his right hand, it was empty. 2. No spent brass casing. It was implied that whatever was on his tape that he listened to made him kill himself, but with no tape to listen to, and no bullet having been fired, then he clearly was alive. In Big Hero 6 the evil genius villain couldn't kill Hero by pushing him into a portal because his mind controlled nanobots wouldn't reach. However, he is holding the portal up with nanobots. He could have easily dropped it lower to push him in. He could have also lowered his own pillar of bots to provide more nanobots to raise his. I would have let this blatant solution slide if they didn't talk him up as the smartest robot scientist ever. A new hope. Why didn't the rebels just make a copy of the plans? It's all digital storage. That way the empire would not have known they were missing. The empire didn't figure it out because the plans were missing. They figured it out because the plans were beamed to Leia's ship during a battle. So they were aware of an attack, and traced the beam to a specific ship. It doesn't matter whether or not it had been copied first, the Empire knew where to look. World War Z. Spoilers alert. No one realized that there were hospitals all over the world with sick people that zombies will just ignore? 1. Not all patients were ignored. A guy with a broken leg would have gotten eaten. 2. The patients could have been dying from other causes, like neglect, heart attacks, injuries from being trampled, etc. It's not as if all the patients were left untouched while the zombies ate the stuff and visitors, so it would have been much harder to figure out. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.